As well as saving images or icons, we can save the whole state of the PixInsight platform. Imagine that we're working on a complex project like this one with a lot of images and masks open. We're halfway through processing the image, but for some reason we have to close the program and turn off the computer. We don't want to lose our work and PixInsight provides a solution. We can save the whole state of the program to disk. We can do this by saving it as a project. To do this, we go to the File menu and select Save Project. Opening an image and opening a project aren't the same. To open an image, we simply select Open, and to save it, we select Save or Save As. But to open a project, we have to select Load Project, and to save it, we select Save Project. Let's save this project. We select the target directory, and the name of the project. What can we save in a project? Absolutely everything. We can save the images and the previews. We can also save the states of the tool interfaces, icons, text documents if we have them. Note that when we save images, we're not just saving them in their current state. PixInsight saves all the images and previews along with their complete processing history. It saves the processes themselves and the states of the images in each process. This means that a project can take up a lot of disk space, so we need to make sure we have enough space to save it. The estimated size of this project, for example, is about 66 gigabytes, so it will take the computer some time to save it. In this project, we've saved all of those images. These are the working images that we've used to process the photograph. Here, we've got some pixel math icons and process containers that contain experimental processes. And here, we have some finalized processes that we've already given new identifiers. In the second workspace, we have star masks, each one with its corresponding processing history. In a processing history, it's important to know where the initial state comes from because many masks are built based on other masks. This is also very important in the history of the image itself. For example, this image has an initial state where we've subtracted the R filter image from the H alpha image to remove the effect of the continuum emission in the narrowband image. In the third workspace, we have lightness masks, each with its own processing history. We can navigate between all the states in each image. and we can see all the images in View Explorer. All of this is saved to the hard disk in the form of a directory with the extension .pxi project. We can browse this directory. Here we have the XML file that defines the content of the project and all the image data. But in File Explorer, we see it as a single file that we can load directly in PixInsight. We can also save a project with all its data in a directory and an XML file that defines its content. Let's load this project. When we save projects like this, if we want to transfer them to another computer, we'll need the XML file as well as the associated directory. This project contains four images and some icons with their identifiers and with all their parameters, and each one has its own description. We can also save it again and now it's just one file. There are also compression options, just like when we save images in XISF format. If we want to save a lot of disk space, we can choose Zlib compression. The fastest option is LZ4, and LZ4HC is also very fast, but it compresses more. Compression can be a problem with very large projects because it takes much longer to save and load them.
We therefore have to choose between disk space or read and write speed. When we open a large project, all the states of the images will be written to the directory we've configured to save the swap files. So, when we open a very large project, we need to have enough disk space for those temporary files. In the case of the M31 project, we don't just need 66 gigabytes of space to save the project, we also need 66 gigabytes of space to be able to open the project because those 66 gigabytes will be copied to that directory. We select the Swap Files directory in the Global Preferences window, here in the Directories and Network section. We can add the same directory several times so that the swap files are written and read in parallel. This will increase the read and write time each time we apply a process to the image. This is particularly useful when we're working with high resolution images. On this computer, we've found that we get the best transfer rate if we use eight processor threads. This varies from computer to computer, so for optimum read and write speeds, you'll need to measure transfer rates on your own computer. Lastly, we can also see the project metadata. These metadata are written when we save the project via the Save Project option in the File menu.